Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshara. Today in this module, we will be discussing about another energy from waste to process, anaerobic digestion of solid waste. Now, as I told you earlier, waste treatment is one another important step in a waste management plan. It is a crucial step and it is important next to waste collection. Now, waste treatment is essential to avoid the undesirable or unwanted consequences on the environment and the health hazards posed by these waste material. Now there are many treatment methods which are available starting from your thermal treatment method, advanced thermal treatment method, chemical method and the biological method. Now the thermal method uses very high temperature to destruct the waste and result in the formation of the end products and the waste that is destroyed uh, results in the generation of energy which can potentially convert it into electricity. One example is incineration where you use very high temperature of 900 to 1100 degrees Celsius and then destruct the waste into ash which is an inert residue. The advanced thermal treatment methods also use very high temperature but they are done in the presence or absence of oxygen example is your pyrolysis and gasification. Now another major treatment method is your biological conversion methods. Examples are composting, vermicomposting, biogasification, anaerobic digestion where you use microorganisms for converting them into a suitable product. Now since microorganisms are involved, they are eco-friendly and cost effective. Also they produce residue which are safe to be disposed of into the environment. They do not discharge any harmful contaminants into the environment. And the waste to energy process is uh, like the anaerobic digestion results in the formation of or the production of the gaseous material which can be used as a fuel or it can be converted into electricity. The residue which is left out at the end of uh, the bi biological uh, degradation can be used in the agriculture fields as a manure. With this introduction, now let us look into the learning objectives of the module. Now the learning objectives of this module would be to understand the concept and the process of anaerobic digestion. Two, to create awareness about the different types of reactors that are used in anaerobic digestion of solid waste. To gain knowledge about the factors that influence the process of anaerobic digestion. Also to realize the merits and demerits of the anaerobic digestion process. Now as I told you earlier, municipal solid waste consists of around 70% of organic fraction of which 53% is biodegradable. Now instead of disposing these organic fraction into landfills, they can be effectively utilized to recover energy as they possess a lot of chemical energy embedded within them and the residue can be converted into manure. The organic fraction of waste is carbon rich and hence can be easily degraded and converted into energy. Now anaerobic digestion shortly called as AD is one option where the organic biodegradable fraction of waste is digested in the absence of oxygen and it results in the production of methane carbon dioxide which is nothing but your biogas and a residue that can be potentially used as a manure. Now anaerobic digestion can be performed only with the biodegradable fraction. It is essential to separate the biodegradable waste from the other components of the commingled waste which is generally done by segregation or screening. Apart from cow dung you can also use the biogas digestate slurry or any other digestate from the anaerobic digester. Now within the digester the waste will be heated and it will be continuously agitated till uh, the generation of methane and carbon dioxide. Now uh, just like the biogasification which undergoes or which occurs by anaerobic process, anaerobic digestion also includes anaerobic process which is carried out in four stages. One is your hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis and methanogenesis. Now let us look into the process description. Now hydrolysis phase uses the facultative anaerobes and it converts carbohydrates into sugars, proteins to amino acids and ammonia via, via deamination, lipids to fatty acids and glycerol. Now the gas production at this stage can rise up to 80% of carbon dioxide and 20% of hydrogen. 
Now acetogenesis converts the organic acids that are formed called as the volatile fatty acids into acetic acids and its derivatives. Along with that you also find the generation of carbon dioxide and hydrogen. The next stage is your acetogenesis phase where it is also called as the acid stage and this involves the acidogenic bacteria. Now, some microorganism converts this carbohydrates into acetic acid in the presence of carbon dioxide and hydrogen. The end of this stage is marked by a decrease in the level of hydrogen and carbon dioxide. The last stage in the anaerobic digestion process is your methanogenesis where your methanogenic bacteria convert the acetic acids and its derivatives into carbon dioxide and methane. The methane generating microorganisms are promoted during low hydrogen levels. Two groups of microorganisms are active during this stage. One is your mesophilic bacteria which are active in the temperature range of 30 to 35 and the other one is the thermophilic bacteria operated or working in the range of 45 to 65 degrees Celsius. And the gas production during the methanogenesis stage comprises uh, uh, of 60 percent methane which is a major gas and 40 percent carbon dioxide. Now this figure shows the different stages of anaerobic process where you can see stage 1 hydrolysis how your complex biopolymers are broken down into simple monomers and oligomers nothing but your sugars, amino acids and peptides. The, here your fermentative bacteria plays a role. In the second phase acidogenesis your monomers are further converted into volatile fatty acids uh, like the propionic, propionic acid, butyric acid and so on. In phase 3 this propionates, butyrates are further converted into acetates and carbon dioxide and hydrogen. And last phase where your methanogenic bacteria comes into existence and it will start breakdowning your acetates into methane and carbon dioxide. Now let us discuss about the post treatment. On completion of the methanogenic, methanogenic phase, the end of digestion process occurs. The digestate that is withdrawn is subjected to post treatment like separation, composting and storage. The undigested material like glass and plastic will be sorted out manually. The, uh, the digestate will then be fed into a filter press for dewatering, nothing but to remove the water from the solid material. The red residue will then be stabilized by the process of composting. The composted product will then be stored, packed and sold as a manure. In certain times if the residue contains hazardous substance they are disposed of safely in landfills. Now what are the microorganisms are that are generally involved in the process? One is your hydrolytic bacteria which causes the breakdown of complex substances especially the cellulose and hemicellulose into simple substances. Among the microbial population 90 percent of population is acidogenic bacteria. They degrade the polymers to acids and acetates and facilitate easy utilization of substrate by methanogens. Now acid formers grow vigorously and tolerate a wide variety of environmental conditions. The major microorganisms involved in the acetogenesis process include Cyanotrophobacter volini, a propionite decomposer and Cytrophomonas wolfi, a butyrate decomposer. Other acid formers include the Clostridium species, Peptococcus and Robus. Lactobacillus and Actinomyces. The methanogens are slow growers and they require very less nutrition. They rely on the polymer and acid for carbon and nitrogen for their nitrogen. They are sensitive to environmental conditions like pH, atmospheric oxygen and so on. The atmospheric oxygen is one main factor that affects the growth of methanogens even at very low concentration. Nitrates and nitrites also inhibit their growth. The optimum pH level required for the survival of methanogens is 7. However, they tolerate a pH in the range of 4.5 to 8. Some of the methanogenic bacteria are methanobacterium, methanobacillus, methanococcus and methanosarsena. Now in general methanogens are divided into two groups acetate and hydrogen carbon dioxide consumers. Methanosarsena species and Methanotrix species are considered to be important in anaerobic digestion both as acetate and hydrogen carbon dioxide consumers. Methane producing bacteria transforms the acids by two types of reactions. One is the fermentation of sh short chain fatty acids and some alcohols respiration in which hydrogen 
carbon dioxide and certain simple organic compounds are oxidized anaerobically and coupled with the reduction reaction of carbon dioxide to form methane. Now acetic acid is converted into methane and carbon dioxide and methyl alcohol is converted into methane, carbon dioxide and water. The production of methane through respiration involves incomplete oxidation of alcohol to acetic acid coupled with reduction of CO2 to methane and can be exemplified by the reaction uh, done by methanobacterium omlianski. This is the equation uh, which shows how uh, methyl alcohol is converted into acetic acid and your methane. Also the, the other equation shows how uh, hydrogen combines with carbon dioxide to form methane and water. Now let us discuss about the different types of reactors which are used in anaerobic digestion process. First one is your dry continuous digestion where the dry matter content of 20 to 40 percent is digested in this system. The digester is operated in a continuous mode both completely mixed and plug flow systems are also used for continuous digestion process. To initiate the digestion in a plug flow system the digestate will be mixed with the incoming feedstock and then inserted. The second type of uh, digestion is a dry batch digestion where the digestion is operated in a batch mode. The digester will be filled with the waste, it will be sealed and then left aside till the complete digestion. The digestion in this system will occur naturally and the leachate that is generated will be recirculated back into the digester to maintain the moisture content. Now by, by doing such circulation, it will also maintain the inoculum within the digestate also it will maintain the nutrients level in the digestate, digester. The digester is opened at the end of the digestion process. The third type of process is a leach bed or a sequencing batch process. Now similar to a dry batch process except for the fact that leachate uh, during, uh, obtained during biodegradation is uh, recirculated or exchanged, rest all is same. Now exchange is done, again done to facilitate the startup of biodegradation process. Waste in which the methanogenesis process is complete is termed as an established waste. After completion of methanogenesis, the digester is disconnected and loaded with fresh solid waste. In certain cases, the fresh waste is loaded into a second digester and connected to the first digester to facilitate complete digestion. The next type of uh, digestion is your wet continuous digestion. The waste to be digested by wet continuous method should contain a large amount of water and less amount of solid almost 10 percent. Now briefly the waste is made into a slurry and fed to the digester. The digester can be conventional or completely mixed. At the completion of the digestion process, the digestate will be removed and then supplied to a filter press for dewatering. The dewatered or uh, sludge, the water arising at the end of dewatering process can be recirculated back to the digester. Next type is a multi-stage wet digestion. Here wet digestion is channelized into a number of stages. It is almost similar to your wet digestion where the waste is made into a slurry with water or any recycled liquor which can be a uh, digestate liquid. The slurry is then fermented using hydrolytic and fermentative microorganism. The resulting volatile fatty acids is converted into gas in a high rate anaerobic digester specially designed for this purpose. Now let us discuss about the composition and the property of biogas that is produced during the anaerobic digestion of solid waste. The biogas is generally comprised of two major grasses, major gases. One is methane which predominates the mixture uh, by 55 to 65 percent and the other one is your carbon dioxide which is around 34 to 44 percent. There are also other trace gas which is found in the mixture, nothing but your hydrogen sulphide, molecular nitrogen and water. Now methane, hydrogen and carbon dioxide can be used as a fuel. The heating value as such of the biogas if you see it is around 18,630 to 26,080 kilojoules per meter cube and uh, the biogas should be free of hydrogen sulphide otherwise it will cause corrosion in the engines. When the biogas are compressed, cleaned, they, they they are brought to natural gas standards and they are termed as methane. Now this table provides the composition of biogas where methane comprises of 55 to 60 percent, carbon dioxide 40 percent, water in the range of 2 to 7 percent, 
hydrogen sulfide nitrogen oxygen will be in the range of 2% ammonia will be 0.05% and hydrogen around 1% now let's discuss about the various factors that influence your anaerobic digestion process the first one is a temperature temperature plays an important role in successful generation of biogas a temperature of around 30 to 35 degree celsius and 45 to 65 degree celsius required is required for mesophilic and thermophilic bacteria now higher the temperature more is the gas production and thermophilic bacteria generally play a major role in gas generation now heating the digester will enhance the gas production next comes your ph the ideal ph range for a proper Biogas generation, especially for the growth of methanogenic bacteria, is around 6.8 to 7.5. At least an optimum pH of 7 should exist in the reactor for a good gas production. Now, the reactor is prone to acidic condition during the acido and the acetogenic phases. Now, acidic pH generated due to organic acid inhibit the activity of methanogens. Now, the nature of waste as such if you see it depends upon the biodegradability and the complexity of the waste simple waste can degrade faster and it will result in more gas generation unlike your complex waste the next important parameter that influences your uh, biogas generation is your moisture now high moisture level might affect the growth of microorganisms on the other hand lower moisture content can reduce the liquid effluent from the digester Municipal solid waste generally contains a moisture of around 60%. When they are co-digested with a sewage sludge, the moisture percentage increases to 90%. Now, when you do a minimum processing like shredding uh, or size reduction, which I have already told you earlier, this will improve the surface area. When the surp surface area is increased and it will increase the performance of gas generation because the contact between the substrate and the microorganisms is increased. Then comes your carbon to nitrogen ratio. Higher the carbon to nitrogen ratio, it leads to high acid content and low methane generation. Municipal uh, solid waste generally contains a C by N ratio of around 50, whereas sewage sludge contains a C by N ratio of 10. Therefore, when you co-digest them, they give a better gas generation. Now, let us look into the various advantages of the anaerobic digestion process. One, it results in the generation of a valuable byproduct like biogas and a residue which can be used as a manure. It reduces the greenhouse gas emissions by recovery of methane. They can efficiently treat a variety of organic waste and wastewater. They can reduce solid and I mean uh, excess uh, sludge production can be minimized and thereby the problem of sludge handling can be minimized. It will also remove pathogens and the process stability is very high. Now, the disadvantages include this system requires skilled operators and the use of energy produced during the process is still under development. They are very sensitive to chemical compounds, especially the methanogenic bacteria. A slight change or any uh, presence of any chemical will inhibit their growth and it will literally kill the methanogenic bacteria. Then presence of sulfurous compounds might create odor problem. To summarize, at the end of this module, we have discussed about the anaerobic digestion process, what are the four stages in anaerobic digestion process, how do you perform the process like the pretreatment, digestion, post-treatment and what do you do with the residue. We also discussed about the various properties and the composition of biogas that is being reduced and also the application of residue is also discussed. Then, we looked into the different types of reactors like the wet digestion, dry digestion reactors, batch reactors, continuous reactors and so on. Then we discussed about the various factors that generally influence your anaerobic digestion process. Lastly, we discussed about the various advantages and disadvantages that are associated with the anaerobic digestion process. I hope this module would be of help to you. Thank you.